Place your bets, place your bets. Basketball, place your bets. Baseball, place your bets. Whatever your game, place your bets at Arizona's best bet, Desert Diamond Sportsbook and Bar. Place your bets in our kiosk 24 hours a day. You can even place your bets from wherever you are using the Desert Diamond Sports app. Fun to watch, easy to bet, fun to play. The new Desert Diamond Sportsbook and Bar is Arizona's best bet. An enterprise of the Thana Autumn Nation. I'm Jason Barr. Let's start by looking at the men's bracket. U of A earning the number one seed in the South. The Wildcats up top there are going to play the winner of Wright State and Bryant on Friday in San Diego. Wright State and Bryant, that's a play-in game. And if you want to look ahead to maybe a second round matchup, that would be the winner of Seton Hall and TCU. That's an 8-9 game. And if you really want to look ahead to maybe in the Sweet 16, you've got Houston in there as a 5 seed, Illinois as a 4 seed in the South. And if you really want to have some fun and look ahead at a possible Elite 8 matchup, Villanova is the number two seed in the South, possibly a team that the Wildcats would have to get by to get to the Final Four. Last spring, Arizona hired Tommy Lloyd, the longtime assistant at Gonzaga, and he finally got his shot to be a head coach. Safe to say it's worked out pretty well so far. Lloyd, the Pac-12 Coach of the Year, and his team, Pac-12 champions. But as the Wildcats head into March Madness, Lloyd is not letting the team get ahead of itself. Before his first season as Arizona's head coach, Tommy Lloyd called his shot. We're not looking for a total rebuild. We're looking to come out and kick ass this year. That's what the Wildcats did. They took Lloyd's fast pace of play and ran with it. Leading the nation in assists, undefeated at home, a flurry of team awards, and a Pac-12 championship. I mean, this is what I came down here to try to do, so, um, you know, I didn't have a timeline on it, but I guess why not now? Lloyd, the Pac-12 Coach of the Year and a National Coach of the Year finalist. But for all his early success, Lloyd is locked in to the present moment. The national attention he's getting. It's not even a blip on my radar. His focus has stayed on his team. That helped his roster take a big leap forward this season. Ben Matherin, the Pac-12's Player of the Year. Christian Coloco, the Pac-12's Most Improved Player. It's, you know, team chemistry and player development. And those are two things I take serious and we work out on a daily basis. I want these guys to get better and I want them to feel like they want to get better and I want to create that culture where, where people get better. Point guard Kirk Kreese bought into that culture. He was in the transfer portal last year, but Lloyd convinced him to stay. Pretty easy decision for me and uh, I liked his vision. I liked how, how he puts uh, a lot of things to team chemistry and building the team. And I also liked how he saw the game on the basketball court. He said he's the most uh, European-American coach in the, in the country. Lloyd is known for connecting with international players. And with half the Cats roster from outside the U.S., he was a perfect fit. He's like like a little father for me. He's, uh, you know, he's taking care of me, like uh, on the court, off the court, always talking to me, texting before the games, you know, like he's a really big mentor for me and I believe for all of our team. I feel like when I have relationships with them and, and love them, I can push them more. I'm just doing things that I feel comfortable with and are natural for me. I'm not doing it, you know, because somebody else did it a different way. You know, I'm just doing it the way I'm most comfortable with and trying to be myself. Now in the NCAA tournament, there's no reason for Lloyd to try to be anyone else. The stakes are high, but the mentality is the same. Our, our motivation is to win the next game. For just the second time in program history, Arizona women's basketball is hosting in the NCAA tournament. The Wildcats earn a number four seed. Let's go and look at the bracket. U of A is down here. They're going to play UNLV. That game is going to be Saturday at McHale Center. And if the Wildcats win that, they play the winner of Stephen F. Austin and North Carolina. North Carolina, the five seed. Stephen F. Austin is the 12 seed. That would get the Wildcats into the Sweet 16, but looming would be a game potentially against top seeded South Carolina that would not be easy, especially because that game would be in Greensboro, North Carolina. Last season, Arizona women's basketball came up just one shot short of a national title. That run propelled the program to new heights, but it also made coach Adia Barnes's journey as a new mother even more remarkable. 
Her story led her to stardom, not just here in Tucson, but across the whole country. After the tournament, like I got like a way more, a lot more followers on Twitter. Adia Barnes's life changed after last year's magical march, coaching Arizona to the championship game while raising a newborn at home catapulted her into the national sports spotlight. I think it's really cool to be a voice for moms and help women. I think that's an honor and I like I love being a mom. I love what I'm doing. It's very hard. It's like I, I understand why women can't do it because there are days when I don't feel like I can. Here in Tucson, she's now a star off the court, too. In the past year, serving as the Grand Marshal at the Classics Car Show and at the Rodeo Parade. I mean, I, I think I was more popular in Tucson from being the Rodeo Marshal than winning games. I literally got more texts about the Rodeo Marshal, so I was like, wow. Her coaching success made it all possible. Barnes was an assistant for USA Basketball last summer and she turned down a big offer from Baylor to stay at the U of A. This season, she's once again a National Coach of the Year candidate. She says all the attention can be distracting for her and the team, but she wants to turn it into a positive. I forget that stuff. I forget that so many people are watching, and um, I think that, you know, being a role model, is, it's an honor. It's not a burden, and I think that you have to take that with pride. It seems like Barnes's maternal instincts are being felt in the locker room too. Obviously I'm a little biased, but I think she's an awesome coach. Uh, not only just basketball skills, but she's also a mother. She cares about us as players. She worries about like us off the court, make sure we're okay. Just, you know, checking in on us just as like a normal like mom would. So it's really nice to have that. After just six wins in 2018, the team's now rattled off four straight 20 plus win seasons. I'm just happy our team's able to do it again because it's not me, it's the players. Perhaps no player knows Barnes as well as Sam Thomas. She'll say like, oh, it's the players, like they help. But I mean, we ch come here because of her. So it really is a lot owed to her. Kate Reese will play in the NCAA tournament when the Wildcats take on UNLV this Saturday at McHale Center. She suffered a dislocated shoulder back on February 20th and has not played since. Reese is the Wildcats leader with 15 points per game and six rebounds per game as well. It is perhaps the biggest change in college athletics since the advent of the three-point line, but this one is off the court. Student athletes can now profit off their name, image, and likeness. And U of A's Dale and Terry is not only promoting other brands, but he has his own one as well. It was last July when the NCAA started allowing student athletes like Arizona's Dale and Terry to be compensated, not directly by their university, but by marketing their name, image, and likeness, or NIL for short. And I just knew I was going to take advantage of this opportunity because this is something that I wanted to do all my life. So Terry quickly went from assist man to pitch man. First up, a small restaurant chain called Lolo's Chicken and Waffles in his hometown of Phoenix. Lolo's is a place that I've, it's really famous in Phoenix and I've watched it like grow, so it was only right that I did something with them first. Terry has been on Instagram promoting Athletic Brewing's non-alcoholic beer. And he has his own ice cream flavor at the Screamery. It's called DT's Triple Chocolate Ice Cream. I've heard so many people say they got my ice cream. I've got a lot of videos on Instagram and then after the games they always send me like videos of them eating it. So. I think they're the most. But Terry's favorite products to promote are his own. He has a clothing line called Publicly Private, a brand he came up with that personifies the following. I really believe in myself, like I'm really confident, but at the same time I'm a real private person. A quick check of his website shows t-shirts and hoodies for sale. Terry's family is helping him out as he juggles schoolwork, the shot clock, and sales all at the same time. I want to get into stuff that I really like wear, like different type of jeans or jackets and stuff like that. The tank top on game day is still Terry's main focus, all while he takes advantage of this new opportunity for NCAA student athletes. Terry says sales are off to a good start. As of right now, since I'm in college, I'm not really tripping over the money aspect. I just want people to see what I'm doing and I just want to be able to make it grow. No player has seen the rise of Arizona women's basketball quite like Sam Thomas, who was a freshman on the Wildcats six win team. Four years later, she's finishing up her U of A career, one in which she's made as big of an impact on the court as she has off of it. It was a bittersweet moment. A day after the Wildcats lost to Stanford in the national championship game, their season-long success was celebrated at a ceremony at Arizona Stadium. That's when Sam Thomas made a surprise announcement. This has been a great journey with my teammates, um, and I'm going to come back for one more. Yeah!
It was news to fans, but Thomas was sure that ever since the NCAA decided to grant seniors an extra year of eligibility due to COVID-19, she was going to lace up her sneakers for another season at McHale Center. I wanted to because after the great year we had last year, I wanted to feel that again. I love it here. I love Tucson. I love the fans. So I just wanted to play, play on this court a couple more times. But there was no guarantee the Wildcats would be a national contender again this season. Harry McDonald carried the team at times and was the number three pick in the WNBA draft. Once Ari left, I knew that everyone knew that they had to step up and just, you know, bring in transfers, recruits, everyone else that was already here stepping up. Um, I wasn't too concerned about where we were going to be this year. If I could keep her every single year, I'd keep her. Adia Barnes didn't just start Thomas during her freshman season. She made Thomas her captain and has been so ever since. If there's a heated moment in practice where they have to come together, she's um, the moderator. She's um, calming people with a sense of confidence and, and you listen when she talks. Her leadership extends off the court. Thomas earned the university's community service award for the most hours served. She was named the female recipient of the 17th annual Coach Wooden Citizenship Cup, given to the most outstanding role models among student athletes. Off the court, she's phenomenal. She's a great represent, representative of the program. And I think this year what you see is her growth on the court. She's um, scoring a lot more points. She's more aggressive, she's more vocal. So it's, it's been great to watch the growth. This year, Thomas has taken on a new role as a clothing designer. As she pursues a master's degree, Thomas has launched a lifestyle brand and partnership with former Wildcat Danielle Edifiso. Nike has already called her. She can do whatever she wants, and I think she's going to have a lot of opportunities. I've been with Adia for obviously five years now, took a chance on her with the program to rebuild. So just to see the progress that we've all made and then myself as a person on and off the court, um, I never would imagine to get all these awards, all this recognition and, you know, make it to the national championship, be with Adia for so long. I never thought I'd be in college for five years. So just to have all of this, I'm just trying to live up every moment. We're here in front of the 1997 National Championship Trophy, hoping that the Wildcats can bring home a second one. Ryan Hansen joins me, the uh, radio analyst. And Ryan, uh, this is a, a tall task, but they are the second number one in the nation. That is a good sign. It's only happened a few times in Arizona basketball history, right? It's pretty rich with tradition, but this just doesn't happen. So it's been since 2014 since they've been a number one, and before that was 2003. So it, it does bring some pressure to be the number one seed in your region and the second overall seed, but at the same time, so much excitement because yeah. of that. Yeah. We're looking at the bracket here, and you you know you figure the 16th seed, okay. Then you get an interesting, you know, Seton Hall, TCU, Jamie Dixon at TCU's really made them relevant again. You, you wonder what that second round matchup will look like. You look at both of those teams, and you can essentially say to yourself, this is Colorado. And maybe not in style of play, but you look at where they finished in their conference and the types of teams that they beat. They've got potential to beat the best team in the Big East or the Big 12, which they did. Now, in some cases, in TCU's case, let's put it this way, most of their big wins came at home. When you look a little further down the road, you've got the potential for a Tennessee. You've got the potential for a Villanova. What, what stands out to you the rest of the way through that bracket? Well, the first thing fans need to remind themselves is Sweet 16, Elite Eight games, you're going to be playing one of the best teams in the country who's hot. But a rematch is intriguing, right? So Arizona... Won one game, lost another one to Tennessee. So is that a revenge factor? Arizona's been able to avenge yeah. two of their three losses. So that's kind of intriguing. But does Illinois feel that way about playing Arizona? Man, we had them. If we had Curbelo at the point, we've got this game. So do they get a leg up? And I am never excited to play Jay Wright. That would never be a great idea is let's play a coach that has won two national titles and always gets the most out of his players. That's challenging, but you know what? Every other number two seed in the bracket that Arizona could have faced in the Elite Eight is going to be great too. So that would be a, a really difficult one, though, with Jay Wright at the helm. I'll ask you one final question, and that is let's just uh, say what if. What if it became – a Mark Few versus uh, his pupil in Tommy Lloyd, Gonzaga versus Arizona. Wouldn't that be uh, maybe the, the big matchup that everybody's kind of hoping for? These tournaments are all about storylines, and that one is absolutely the easiest one to go to, but also the most attractive. How many experts have already picked that, have already said that's going to be the case? And to watch it, uh, I heard somebody say this yesterday, and I think they're right. 
probably the two most aesthetically pleasing basketball styles in the country, and they come from the same coaching tree. Let's just see haymaker after haymaker of great offense, and that would be maybe one of the most entertaining potential matchups in recent tournament history. Got a long road to get there, but it sure would be fun. Uh, we can talk about these yeah. things in the media. Fans can get excited, but oh my goodness, it is a long road to get to that place. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Matt. All right, here at the Hall of Champions, I'm joined by P.J. Brown, women's basketball reporter for the Arizona Daily Star. She does a great job. P.J., thanks so much for joining us. I think everybody wants to know how effective is Kate Reese going to be after not playing for nearly a month with that dislocated shoulder. She's coming back for this tournament. Yes, um, you know, it's been said that she's 100%. She's ready to go, and I think she's ready to go. I think she wants it. You know, she went to the tournament game last year, the title game with this team, and they lost by one point. So she's determined to play, and I think she'll play pretty well. Well, the first round matchup is going to be against UNLV Saturday at 7 o'clock. The running Rebels haven't been to the tournament in 20 years. Maybe they feel like they don't have much to lose going up against the national runner-up. How do you see the matchup on Saturday? I think it's going to be a great matchup. First of all, we all know it's Thomas' sister versus Thomas' sister, Sam Thomas for the Arizona women's basketball team and her younger sister Jade for UNLV. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. Everybody's just glad that U of A is going to host a couple of games and they would be thrilled if they won those couple of games. But if they did, we've got South Carolina looming in North Carolina. That's a potential roadblock. No, that is. But you know, the interesting thing about this is last week I looked back at last year's run. Now, last year they were a three seed. This year they're a four seed. So a three seed, you know, you're going to get a little bit, bit easier run to the final four. However, it wasn't so easy last year. It's hard to believe that it's been 25 years since Arizona won its only national championship in basketball. We take a look back at that improbable run with two men who had front row seats, literally. We were not uh, prepared for this at all. Dave Silver was the longtime sports director at KGA 9 and covered Arizona's run to a national title in 1997, a run few expected. They had a lot of young guys on that team, a lot of freshmen, a lot of people we just weren't sure about. So, you know, as that season unfolded, it was like, wow, this is a pretty good team. They still didn't finish great. Remember, they lost their last two Pac-10 games. Um, but then they got hot, you know, it was just an unbelievable run to the end. Every Lute team had a chance. Ryan Hansen was on Lute Olson's staff for many years. In 1997, he was the video coordinator. That particular team was struggling down the stretch and, and didn't play its best basketball, but you felt like this group, if they could ever get it put together, was going to do something special. The Wildcats were only a four seed in what was then known as the Southeast Regional. Arizona disposed of South Alabama and College of Charleston before facing top-seeded Kansas, a Jayhawks team that was loaded. That Kansas team had, what, Jacques Vaughn, Rafe LaFrance, Paul Pierce, you know, all these guys have played in the NBA. Roy Williams was their coach. He was in tears when that game ended, and Arizona's walking away with the win. That's when many stood up and took notice of an Arizona team now on a roll. The Cats beat Providence in the regional final, and their confidence was sky high. We believe that Mike Bibby is going to hit a big three when he gets the ball, or Michael Dickerson's going to take it to the hole and get an and one when he gets the ball, and uh, it's just that confidence that we have. It's just we're finally coming together. I mean, the, their guards are getting confidence in us, and we're building confidence in the guards. In Indianapolis, Arizona took down another one seed in the national semifinal game. The Wildcats beat North Carolina by eight. The underdog role, I mean, that's great. No one... No one gives us a chance to, to win or, you know, come close in these games. And, and we're just coming out and, and uh, believing in ourselves and, play, and playing uh, good Arizona basketball. Up next, the national championship game against yet another number one seed, Kentucky. It was a very long day waiting for the late Monday night tip-off. Dave Silver caught up with Lute Olson that afternoon in the team hotel. Everyone talks, you know, about the psychological edge maybe you have. You're not the favorite. Is, is, can we throw that away now yeah. that the game is here? I think they know, being uh, who we've beaten, that, uh, that, you know, whatever psychological advantage it was, we probably have blown that uh, <laughs> by now. So I know Kentucky respects what we do and we respect what they do. It's, it's going to be, be an excellent ball game, I think. As the team was about to leave the hotel for the short ride to the RCA Dome, they had a special guest step onto the bus. The greatest player in Arizona history, 
Sean Elliott. He delivers just a little bit of an inspirational talk, not a Newt Rockne type talk, but more of take Arizona where none of us had been able to take it before. You guys are representing all of us in this national title game. They did. Arizona winning the catfight between the U of A Wildcats and the Kentucky Wildcats, although it took overtime. But Lute Olson's calmness in the huddle heading into OT was the difference, according to Hanson. At that moment, you just knew, we're going to win. We're going to win this thing because of Coach O's calmness that he, you know, extended to the team. And it was just, it was a great moment. We don't have the individual egos. We don't have guys that think they're bigger than life. Uh, uh, they're together and they represent the University of Arizona. Miles Simon scored 30 points and was named the Final Four's most outstanding player. You just don't even know what to think or feel and you just you just sit up there and look at all the fans and and uh, you know you don't even know what you've done so you know it'll, it'll probably sink in you know probably tomorrow or the next day. We knew that we had it in us and this for all them non-believers that didn't even think we had a chance at the first game and I mean this I mean it's unbelievable. It was a very short night for Lute Olson. I still thought it was going to be ours. Appearing bright and early the next day on Good Morning America. He explained that quiet confidence in the huddle before overtime and how the Arizona Wildcats took down three number ones in route to a national championship. Still the only team to accomplish that feat. There's Lute Olson. There's Mike Bibby and Miles Simon. The celebration began later that day with a parade from the Tucson airport to a packed Arizona stadium. We flew overhead here and saw the, the stadium just filled and the streets lined. Uh, I mean, we've said all along, these are the greatest fans in the world. So many people can say, I remember where I was when Arizona won their only national title. Well, I can say it's so special to say I was on the bench. I was in the locker room. I was on the bus with these guys. Uh, and that is what I will take away. To have your hometown team win something that big was definitely the highlight. Place your bets, place your bets. Basketball, place your bets. Baseball, place your bets. Whatever your game, place your bets at Arizona's best bet, Desert Diamond Sportsbook and Bar. Place your bets in our kiosk 24 hours a day. You can even place your bets from wherever you are using the Desert Diamond Sports app. Fun to watch, easy to bet, fun to play. The new Desert Diamond Sportsbook and Bar is Arizona's best bet. An enterprise of the Thana Autumn Nation.